Hey guys, it's Jerry, and i um, bringing you another Zomo Lomo video. This time around, uh, what I'm going to do is take a look at, as you could probably tell from my uh, browser here, uh, we're going to take a look at Kaspersky Internet Security 2011. Now, this is a kind of a special review to me because uh, I use Kaspersky 2011 in my uh, my host machine, in my own PC. Uh, I have a laptop that uh, I have Kaspersky on as well. Um, so uh, I am a little I am familiar with it, and uh, 2011 has some exciting new features to it that uh, I really like. One of the things that it has is a virtual desktop, not only a uh, sandboxed um, browser as the previous version had, but um, for 2011, you can virtualize your whole PC, your whole desktop. So I'll show you that. That is um, one of the one of the features that I love about um, the 2011 uh, version. So I just downloaded this, and uh, just real quick, I'm going to try to do a couple of videos tonight and upload them. And uh, what I'm going to do, this is kind of like a Kaspersky night. Um, the next video is going to be Kaspersky Pure. And uh, I'm going to show you what that looks like as well. But this time around, it's going to be the 2011. This is the newest version, the 11.0.1.400 uh, that recently came out, uh, which enhanced or, or um, fixed some uh, issues, some bugs that the uh, 2011 um, Kaspersky Internet Security was having. So it's a 103 megabyte um, install installer, um, pretty good size, but uh, for good reason uh, because uh, it's it's got a lot of features. So let's go ahead and uh, install it. Um, I'm going to try to do this as quickly as possible so we can spend as much of the uh, 15 minutes. If I need to do a second part, I'll do a second part. But at this point, I'm going to try to do as much um, looking at the actual uh, security software than you know, installing and all that. So with, uh, with that said, um, this time around, I'm going to you know, pause a little bit more. This way, I could just have more time with, um, with actually showing you what the software looks like. Um, I have gotten some uh, uh, some uh, suggestions that you know installing and all that you know you guys know what that looks like. I don't really need to show you that. Um, not installing. I'm sorry, downloading the actual um, down the actual installer. It's kind of boring. So um, going forward, I won't do I, I won't really do that anymore because that takes up a lot of uh, time. And uh, so what I'll do now is, uh, is after I download the installer, I'll go ahead and show you what the install looks like. But I will be pausing a little bit more, just like I said, to, um, you know, just to uh, save as much of the precious 15-minute recording time or video time as possible. So I will be right back. Okay, guys, I'm back. Um, this actually came up... Um, pretty quickly. So this is the uh, welcome screen, if you will. Um, just like any other installer, you accept the terms and uh, install it. Uh, hmm, okay, so I need to remove Super any spyware, so I'll do that. I'll be right back. Okay guys, I'm back. Just had to um, remove uh, super and spyware. Now I guess I have to reboot because uh, it needs to get rid of the leftover uh, files or folders for super and spyware. So I'm going to restart and I'll be right back. Okay guys, I'm back. Uh, once I... Uh, actually, hold on one second. Okay, sorry about that. I'm back. Um, once I restarted the computer, the Kaspersky pops up right away. Before you even go on the desktop, pops up to continue with the setup. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. I'm the son. OK, 
And once this uh, installs, I will uh, unpause. Be right back. Okay, guys, I'm back. Um, this is the next screen that comes up after you do the, uh, the install, which asks, do you want to do a, uh, a commercial version uh, or activate the, the uh, Kaspersky Internet Security with a license? Do you want to do a trial version or do you want to activate later? We will do a trial. It's me again, too. It's my son in the background. I don't know if you can hear him. Come here, Zach. Say hello. All right. So after the um, license part of it, what it does is an analysis of your computer. So during system analysis, the product hello. builds a list of trusted applications included in the Microsoft Windows operating system. So this is where it determines what's trusted, what's uh, untrusted as far as blocked or um, set as uh, low risk or medium risk, and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, okay, it's me again. Look, if you think I have these priorities, I do not have these priorities. Okay, bye bye, Zach. Bye, Daddy. Bye, everyone. Okay, so the install is complete. So you're obviously going to get these annoying screens that ask you to buy it. Let's just close that out. Okay, so there is the um, icon for Kaspersky. Um, protection is enabled, and we have a trial version running. So we know that. Uh, I'm not sure if it's trying to open, so I'll just double click on it and see what happens. Um, this is the gadget. If you watched my AVG 2011 um, video, uh, I showed you that AVG 2011 has a cool gadget, and uh, Kaspersky also has a gadget that uh, you can use. Um, it tells you the status. If it's a green, it's a uh, it, the computer's protected. If it's kind of like a goldish color, it's at risk. If it's red, it means that uh, there's a system issue. Um, you have uh, a couple of settings that we'll get to, but this is what the new 2011 interface looks like. You have your protection center. If you uh, click on the drop down arrow, actually, while we're doing that, let's go ahead and run the update. This way, it can, it can run while. Um, while we're looking at this. So if you drop down, uh, what it does is it gives you all the different components within, um, in this case, the protection center. You, so you have file antivirus, you have application control, you have proactive defense. Under safe run, you have safe run for applications. Now this, I love. This is, uh, you can run your whole desktop virtualized. So if you run potentially dangerous applications, um, you can run it in an isolated, safe desktop, and then once you're done with it, you can shut down that virtual, virtualized desktop, and it uh, clears everything out. So that, to me, is awesome. Uh, this is their browser, um, their web browser that, that, you, that you run virtualized, which is their safe run that they had in last year's um, version. And then you have your virtual keyboard. Um, here you could do uh, scans, you can do a full scan, or you could do a critical area scan. You can select where you want to uh, scan or folders and what have you. I already showed you the update center, um, and it does have automatic uh, updates, obviously. Uh, this is new for 2011. You have, uh, well, newer, it's a parental control that you can add users and you can restrict different users from uh, uh, going in and, uh, and making changes to the 
internet security. You can um, you can block access to certain uh, chat rooms and uh, IM and what have you. So uh, that's pretty good that you can have control if you have kids over what they have access to in the, in the computer. Um, you can create a rescue disk, which is excellent. The uh, Kaspersky rescue disk. Um, just like last year, you could do a, a vulnerability scan. Uh, you could configure your browser. You could do a privacy cleaner to get rid of your privacy traces on your browser. And you could do a system restore. Uh, here you have your quarantine. Um, so it, it tells you anything that ha it has quarantined. Uh, you could do all. You could, you could do active threats. Uh, you, could do, you could look at neutralized threats. Um, if you click on status, it tells you what you need to do as far as uh, anything that Kaspersky is waiting for you to take care of. Uh, trial version, um, if you're setting up email, you can do an anti-spam training. Um, this one we're taking care of right now, obviously we're doing an update. Uh, settings. Reports just basically tells you uh, what it's caught, if it's caught any malicious objects, adware, other network attack, uh, banner attack, auto dialer, uh, any vulnerability issues. So it kind of gives you a detailed report of what Kaspersky has found on your system. Uh, settings, there are a ton of settings. Now, uh, I'm already at about 12 minutes in this video, so we're going to have to do a, a second video, um, but there's a ton of settings and Kaspersky to me is not for your your beginner um, or a novice user. There's a lot of settings. Um, you really need to know, uh, I mean it's already configured for you out of the box, but there are some things that uh, you can do to tweak the, um, to, to, to tweak it. You can leave it at recommended settings you can, um, you can put it on high for maximum protection or low for minimum protection. Um, I mean, if, you don't, if you're the type of person that doesn't like to mess around with settings, you just leave it all in, in um, recommended settings. Um, now, one thing about Kaspersky is there's settings within your settings. So you can go in and further tweak your, for instance, mail antivirus, when it scans, do you want to do a heuristics analysis? And how deep or, or you know, uh, how intense of a scan do you want to do? Do you want to do a light scan, medium, deep scan? Uh, so that's, that's getting into uh, even more settings within your uh, mail or file or web antivirus, whichever you want to, uh, to tweak. Um, so you have web. You have IAM antivirus, you have application control, uh, you have a system watcher, a firewall, proactive defense, network attack blocker, any spam, and anti banner. Um, one thing I want to tell you is if you enable the uh, anti banner, I found because I use this, if you use a heuristics anal analysis, some websites will not pop up. Like I had an issue with realtor.com where uh, it wouldn't come up. It would just be a constant blank screen. I was tr pulling my hair out trying to figure out why Realtor.com wasn't coming up. And the reason being is because Realtor has so many pop-ups and, and you know so many scripts in Java that it uses that the anti-banner was blocking the whole site. Uh, and there's other sites that it would probably block as well. So if you're going to use this, just leave it at these recommended settings and it'll work just fine. Okay. Uh, I'm going to do a part two, so stand by. Uh, I'll be right back and we'll continue the, uh, the video. So thanks for watching, and I'll be right back.